Yep. Check, check. Check, check. Yeah. Check. Ooh. Check, check. Check. Is it definitely One, coming two. out of the speaker? Hello. Check, check. Check, check. Hello. All right. I can't tell if I hear myself. Can you can't hear yourself? I can't tell if I can't. Hello? Hello. I don't think I can. I can hear myself, but here. You, you okay. can't hear me? You can hear me? I can you don't have to hear yourself. Oh, okay. Then. Um, there we go. That's just to check your levels. If anyone else, like, if, if anyone else cannot hear, they'll let you know, too. Okay. We're here to level up. All right. Are we in? Are we live? Yes. This is Boozy News. Hello, everybody. I am Roberto De Jesus. This is the show, the podcast, where we talk about hip-hop, world events, and at the same time, we have some drink. So usually, the more we drink, the more we tell the truth. But we're going to tell the truth the entire time because we're doing tonight what we're, what's considered mocktails. Okay, a mocktail is a non-alcoholic cocktail. A lot of times, if you work at a restaurant, you know what it is. Usually, families come in, either the woman's... Uh, Pregnant, where they got kids involved, and like, hey, uh, we need something. We need a, what's called a mocktail for our children. The most popular is the Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple, Grandine Sprite. You were doing our version of the Shirley Temple. We're doing some pineapple soda, Sprite, and naked mango and blueberry. And you know it's actually good. Drew just sucked it down like there was no tomorrow. It's all good. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to introduce each other. People need to know who you are. And why are we even having mocktails in the first place, Drew? Yeah. Uh, so for those out in Radio World, this is the sequel right here. My daughter Savannah. Hi, Savannah. In She's town. under twenty-one years old. Okay. That's so okay. that's yeah. basically why it's going under that way. So. Damn it, Savannah! I was here for the hard booze. <laughs> My I was bad. here for the henny. My bad. He's like, "Wait, get the drink for free." He's <laughs> like, drink for free." <laughs> nah, sorry. All right, Bob. Are you in the camera? Oh, you can see him. Yeah, he's, yeah. On there. he's looking yeah. like everyone's on. He's looking like the leader. Everybody's on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Bubba, that's your drink, by the way. Bubba, we're doing. I keep saying Bubba because his Instagram's name is Bubba Bistro, <laughs> yeah. but it's actually Bubba Beast Bro. <laughs> but uh, that's Beast Bro oh, that's in the building. Just walked in. We were sort of waiting uh, for him. Sorry check, that we were late, check. everyone. The dead honest truth is that we were just waiting for Beast to get in the building. Uh-huh. We need Beast to talk with us because he was the previous Supreme Bar's champion mm-hmm. producer. Uh, thanks for coming through. You Thanks might so not get headphones because we have... just put my own on just to feel like... Part feel, of yeah, you feel... <laughs> but we can hear you. As long as you're talking on the microphone, you're all good. Uh, sorry to break the introductions one more time. Drew, did you uh, tell everyone how we know each other and what you're doing in life and who you oh, are? Oh, quick intro. So, exactly. Uh, I'm actor, comedian Drew McConnell. Uh, yeah, that's not a question. That's actually what's going on. Um... So, I do a bunch of random stuff. I know Birdo from when I moved to the city in 2011, and he introduced me to quite a few of the people that I still know and love today. So, that's... And that's how we know Drew. We've known him for, man, eight years already? Something like that, yeah. Damn. 2011. Yo, B, send me that picture. I don't know what's going on with the phone right now. I guess press OK or something. (laughs) uh, Or allow, and then resume. I don't know what that's about, but it's okay. Ah, That's fine. Just exit out in the top left. Uh, all right. Technical difficulties. Too. So we're still on. Okay. So, how do we know you, and why are we having mocktails instead of actual cocktails? Out of respect. <laughs> why are we not drinking out of respect? respect. Because I am under twenty-one years old. Okay. And it's just—I mean, I, I told him I don't mind if you guys did. I just wouldn't be allowed to have it. Right. You know? But, but when it comes to a panel of uh, panelists, we want to make sure that we're on the same page anyway. We don't want to get all saucy where you're just like, yeah, well, this is how I think about it. Well, yeah, who cares what you did? We get all like aggressive and rowdy mm-hmm. and drunk, basically. And we're, we're all law-abiding citizens. Can you pass the duchy? We're, we're all, all law-abiding citizens. We're all citizens law-abiding here. citizens. All pass the duchy. Okay. If we gave you a drink in public, it wouldn't look good. Molly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, don't worry about it. It's all good. Take we're going to have a good pills. time. Okay. Um, Beast, you just came in. <laughs> Tell everybody who you are, how we yeah, know you. Uh, my name is Jax the Beast, bro. I have been rocking with uh, Roberto and Supreme Bars for a little while now. Supreme Bars. For like a couple years. Uh, and Super King Armor as well here to my right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've been hitting that competition as an MC for a couple years. And most recently for February, decided to switch it up and hit that with the producer angle. And you won. And, and it was some And he won. And he won. <laughs> That's your thunk. That's all That's what's done. so funny. He was like, over yeah, he was like rapping as a, uh, he was uh, competing as a rapper That's for crazy. a long time. And then all of a sudden he comes in, he's like, he messaged me like, yo, I want to compete. But as a producer, I'm like, what? 
all right, I want to hear your beats. So I heard the beats, dope. And then he came in. And I'm telling you, man, I was like the placement. Like, everywhere, you, like your second beat, your third beat, everything was harder hitting. Thanks, man. And I mean, it made be- sense. The judges, they didn't, they didn't even know you. That's the best part. When the judges don't know you, like they get wild by you. Like Henny Mac was rapping for a long time and the judges knew him. So every time he mm-hmm. got on the stage, they were like, all right. He's got to do better next time. Whatever, right? Yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden, like, Henny just Sick started hitting it hardcore, much. left, right. His first win was over at Black Bear Bar. He rapped about CDs, and he was just so aggressive about it that he, judges like, yeah, yeah, you won, man. Yeah, you man. won that shit, right? That's sick. It's, it's all about wowing the judges, and you made it happen. Thanks, all four dude. rounds. That was dope. To be totally fair, I mean, I've been hanging around with you guys for a little while, and the winning circle is a little bit of the same people over and over again, so I had a little bit of an advantage. It's not like, easy. MA not only are they winning, but they also up and practice. Like, all they practice cats. at a freestyle, a freestyle around Manhattan, Supreme Fam, all the time. Oh, yeah, for sure, that too. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just been a really cool experience, man, just bringing home that trophy. I mean, it's nice, you know? Aw. I can't wait. Yo, I'm eligible for December now, so. No, for March. Or wait, well, yeah, for oh, March. Oh, for, the, for, the, for like, the yearly yeah. anniversary. Yeah, yeah, the yeah that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Super King. <laughs> I yeah. waited until he was chewing his ice. I'm like, yo, Sue, <laughs> yo, what like, up? Like a waiter, you know, when they always coming through asking you how the meal is. How is everything? A mouthful, <laughs> yeah. Yo, what up? <laughs> Chilling, what up, bro? Though? What up? <laughs> I'm finally here on Boozy News. You almost sound, it almost feels like I'm drunk, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's like we're all like, yo, like, yo, like, wait a minute. Yo, <laughs> yo, what up? Yo, what, what up? up? <laughs> I'm uh, some uh, so that I'm so It's a late '90s Bud commercial. All right, absolutely. So I know Berto since twenty, either late 2013 or the start of 2014, and I remember exactly how it went down because we were either at no, it wasn't Meridian 23 yet. Spike, Spike it was Hill. Spike Hill, yeah. and I come off stage from like battle rapping at Freestyle Mondays. And then this dude just walks by me and slides me a car and says, hey, <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good, kid. Come to this. And, and that's exact. That's exact. And he, we didn't even talk. <laughs> we didn't even talk after that. That's so, so creepy. And he had, he, had, he had like the jacket on. I said, oh, nah, I, I knew from top. This is a hip hop dude. This is a hip hop dude straight up and down. He hosting something. I was hoping, I was hoping he wasn't going to hit me with the, uh, the the hot mess showcase where he was gonna ask me <laughs> to perform for like Puffy's janitor for two minutes for seven hundred dollars. Give me seven hundred dollars cash. <laughs> but, two but, minutes. Which is Puffy's typical. Janitor. Pay for the tickets and you go sell it to your right, friends. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh which God. is typical New York etiquette for said, underground rap. Friends, and we can be janitor. friends. You can sell my tickets every weekend. <laughs> so, but nah, nah. But then he, uh, what'd you say? Is that alright with you? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Cool. Cool. So he so he said come through and Puffy's then um, <laughs> y'all always make that reference because it's always like they be telling you the the industry people are there this A and R is gonna mm-hmm. be there mm-hmm. and it's like somebody who like cleans his Jaguar like late at night this <laughs> this is a Puffy's so third important. grade friend Bill before he moved away right. he knows Puffy. exactly they don't talk anymore actually they I saw him exactly. in the airport it's one time saw him in the airport um, so I know from that. Uh, as far as my own personal, uh, I have won Supreme Bars multiple times. I've won Freestyle Mondays multiple times. Um, I so have. Would you consider yourself a rapper? Uh, yeah, 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 rapper. I, I actually self a uh, self published author, hip hop artist, um, and entrepreneur. Author of uh, what kind of books? Illustration book, graphic novels. Woo! Actually published my first one, successfully funded it with my Indiegogo campaign, and nice. and so now, um, and I am on my last box of Ooh, books. Wow! Two, nice. there's three. There was three boxes, and two of them are now completely empty. And, and I'm all on three the last boxes one. only had one book, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a page <laughs> each. <laughs> one book. I had to assemble it myself. Here's nah. my book. That's, this size. No, <laughs> So gone is the illusion. Look for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll talk about that more as we go through. Most the, definitely. Uh, and uh, I am Roberto De Jesus of Supreme <clears throat> Bars Presidium Events. Uh, this is Boozy News. Uh, we'll talk about Supreme Fam and uh, we'll talk about uh, Supreme Bars and everything else pretty soon. But first, we want to get right to it. It's already five thirty and some change. So uh, 
I sent out four different headlines to everyone yeah. here. Some of them were little fluff pieces. Some of them were actually really serious. I want to start off by talking about an app in Saudi Arabia called Absher, I believe. And uh, this is an app that will actually allow so, so it will allow men. I'm trying to be as PC as possible. You can't be PC when you're talking about this sort of thing. So, like, there's an app out there called Absher. And it's connected to government uh, facilities, connected to government agencies, it's connected to visas, it's connect- it can be connected to your health insurance plan. And this is another way for Saudi men to be able to track their wives. In most Sharia law countries, wives are not allowed to travel unless uh, they have their husbands present or they're not allowed to travel certain distances. And that's really sad. It's also sad because uh, we talked about it a uh, few boozy news ago, a few boozy news ago. Um, that uh, they ju- they were just now allowing. Uh, Jeanette Berry was in that segment too. They allowed uh, Saudi Arabia finally allowed women to be able to drive. Mm-hmm. It, I know it sounds insane, but I would think that in a country that is uh, leaning towards progress and uh, more uh, gender ne- equality, now we have an app. It's been since 2015, actually. Not only the reason why it's a big deal now is because. Uh, uh, folks for like uh, United, you know, humanitarian, whatever. Um, actually, like senators themselves are calling upon Google's CEO Sundar Pichai and um, Apple CEO Tim Cook. Now uh, they are calling on them to just like eliminate the app or to like stop people from yeah. being able to download that app over in Saudi Arabia. Uh, thoughts? Uh, let me know if this is. Uh, am I going too far as to even mentioning something like this or? We need to know. I need to know from the public, uh, especially. I want to know from a younger generation. What do you call your generation now? Is it Z? Is it post? Z. I've heard Z. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Yeah, just... All right. We'll figure it out whenever. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know who, I don't know. Who, I don't even believe in generations like that. But I don't know who. Yeah, uh, like where the cutoff points? Yeah, you know? I know. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. I know but my. Anyway, I have my though? idea of what the cutoff points are, but. Uh, I don't, okay. I don't think that it's too much to be talking about because this is our world. No, we should be discussing things that are right. actually occurring. We want people to know what's going on out there. Yeah, and like, should um, Google actually and, and uh, Apple actually uh, cut them off? Not they, they can't eliminate the app because the app allows them to like um, like have access to all their personal files or whatever. But yeah, if, like, yeah. if like a woman wants to go travel, she has to use a visa. Yeah, that's kind and of And this wild. allows men to like be able to track whether or not they use the visa to leave the country. Yeah, dude. They um, should just disable that feature. Wait, what is not, it? There's a lot more than just that feature. What does it track? Like, exactly? Your like credit card movements yeah, and anything that you do footprint. that has to do with, yeah. It, it's like so it's like a jacked up version of, like, uh, Find My Phone or, yeah. like, what, what does Apple have? Uh, yeah, like, uh, Find My iPhone. Mm-hmm. Right. But, dude, I mean, what are you going <clears> to really <throat> do, right, with the the law of that area being established as that? And that is their norm, you know. It's crazy because we're like. That's why I don't want to judge from the Western world. Yeah, right. but sometimes it might. I mean, where, when do you draw the line? Yeah. When do you draw the line of like? If women over there are okay with it, versus mm-hmm. like human rights and human allowances, or actually rights. I mean, you should never really have to ask anyone's permission how to spend your life. I think, but I don't know, man. That's I know that's, it's, it's well because it's a cultural thing. You know, it's like. That's just how they do it over there. Yeah. But just hearing about it, like, it's just really unfortunate. So should we not uh, even urge the CEOs to? Uh, well, to I think I think in, in that regard, um, when it comes to Apple and Google, because it doesn't seem like there, it's not a cultural interest; it's a financial interest to them for them doing this kind of thing. So I don't I don't think it's a matter of integrity at all on on their on their part. So. Um. What was the point I'm trying to get to? I, just, I nah, I just, I just feel like, I just feel like they're right, right, right. Something, something's in the drink. There's some drink over here. Um, nah, I just, well, I just feel from the aspect of uh, Apple and Google that it's, it's their responsibility to, to have some hand in, you know, maybe how the app works or something like that. Because it's, it's on them. Aren't they the ones that created this thing? Aren't right? they disabling far yeah, right yeah. accounts? So like, what's, I mean, so I mean, they're not exactly. I mean, spreading hatred. I mean, they're not trying to tell people to like go kill other people you know right. but this is all about nah, just but how much freedom should we allow how much freedom should we like how, how involved should we be right you know what I'm saying like, and they, like apple and uh google both said like okay yeah we'll look into it and I that's mean, it it's a two-sided coin dude because like 
how involved should we have even been in the world from a military aspect, right? Like, we see these people, and <clears throat> we're, I, uh, Amer- we as in America, right, um, kind of took it upon ourselves to insert our philosophy into places, you know, policing in the history. The world. Yeah, policing the world and the history of that is really bloody. And d- in the digital age, all that shit on your phones and your iPads and everything, it's all in the cloud. I don't you think know, we're the best the new... people to, like, lead examples of <laughs> like a perfect yeah, society. Yeah, yeah, yeah which we, is we like, actually yeah, haven't gone anywhere that. close to we're a perfect now, society. Like, it looks like they're pushing that front really lightly, really softly, but... And then, yeah, with that with that premise, actually, I'm kind of. It looks like I'm convincing myself that I feel like we shouldn't <laughs> step like, in. interfere. But at the same time, like the Western raised part of me is just like, why do they need tabs on these women? We should fucking cut this shit off. Right. But then that's where the line is like really blurred because if we could do that, what can't we do? Right. You know. And then they're not really trying to touch Saudi Arabia anyway. They're not yeah. trying to get in that smoke. Because Saudi Arabia is is very deep, mm-hmm. and and their money is very influential. That's probably why Google and Apple ain't touching that to begin with, because yeah. their pockets are like crazy. So they're like, we'll look they get away it. with anything. They tell them we'll look into it, and then they go back. We're like, yo, how much are we gonna lose? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, we're making money. Yeah. So, so there's no solution to this at all. Like, we just there's no like, you know, there's well, no I mean, medium you can point. petition them both to disable that aspect of the software because that's you don't have to shut down the entire government site. But, I mean, like, you're right. Like, you're basically telling another country, like, oh, uh, this is how you should run your life. So that's where it kind of gets kind of iffy. I mean, like, if we can't uphold what are supposed to be the norm of rights that we are supposedly, you know, right. say the earth world. Like, when we go we go the bomb a country, we're like, we're bringing democracy. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not how that works. Because if you brought democracy, then democracy would stay there. It wouldn't be, like, uplifting a tyrant or bombing an area and then just leaving it to waste away. You know, like, that's... They've done not, that. They've done like, that countless yeah. of times. Like it's like do as we say, not as we do. Is literally kind of like the American. You know, that's our, that's our policy for the world, right there. You know, so yeah, I think definitely. I think, but if citizens as opposed to a government. Now, citizens, <clears throat> that's where you can get to that contract. If you have like the world as citizens saying, "Hey, fucking stop that." Like when governments, the governments do their own thing. It's a power or whatever. Isn't that what a democracy is? Like the power of the people. Yeah. But I'm saying the people in the world, like you get enough people together and they start making noise, that's when the establishment gets scared and that's when shit changes. Okay. Just like what? with the uh, the upheaval of Amazon from mm-hmm. Queens. Yeah. That was all activism. That was you know all I mean? activism. That so, was a done deal. And that was, and that was good to, to, for that to happen. So, so. you were against uh, <clears throat> HQ2. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, even though they're saying it's going to bring in 20,000 jobs. And Not for New York. But they, bro, but, but they were... Us for like- but Okay, so from my experience, first of all, that area where they were going into was, was already being transformed... Not for people of color and not for people who so have already been gentrified. Lived it. it was being it was gentrified. gentrified. Absolutely. And they, they have been changing LIC since the, uh, the, the early 2000s. So we knew that was coming. Anybody who was a native New Yorker, whether you lived over there or not, saw that change coming. And, and man, that area used to be jacked up. Yeah. And then you just start seeing these changes in like, word? I'm more glass. And, it, and, it wasn't, and, it, and you could tell it wasn't for the people that were there. So, so for um, two like Queens natives or just two New Yorkers in general, yeah, that um, that was that I was to ask like, what do you feel about the Barclays Center? Because that's exactly the same thing that they did. That part of Brooklyn wasn't exactly very gentrified, and once the Barclays Center opened up, forget about it. You couldn't, no one can live there. There was yeah. the, the rent yeah. was jacked. Uh, Atlantic Terminal Mall happened around the same time Barclays Center, right? Yeah. So like, what, that same thing would have happened in Long Island City, but <clears throat> HQ too. But Long Island, Long Island City had already changed, so there was there was already this yeah, kind of gentrified. Before they had anything to bring people in, they started making places for people to live yeah. that they couldn't really afford. Yeah, yeah. it it was That's already high. Happened. Like the the real yeah. estate over there was already crazy already. So for that to be the next wave, I would I would say I would compare that to what Google has done to Oakland. That that was what was going to happen right. uh, over there, and uh, you know so. Uh, in San Fran and stuff like that. So I mean, uh, yeah, I'm. To- I was totally against that. Totally against that. Cool. I was definitely skeptical because of what happened in Seattle. 
Like when they talk about like Amazon being there and all this good stuff they're going to do, right. that whole idea of gentrification and then bringing in low paying jobs and then like mm-hmm. basically the, the state just catering to whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Like all these taxes, don't spend any money. Don't give any taxes to the state. We don't need tax money, but take all these subsidies. And like that's why I was very skeptical about it. Mm-hmm. I was like, if you're just going to make your headquarters here and then bring in a bunch of rich executives or whatever and put them <laughs> up in like all these buildings and then like raise rent. And I see, like, people are like, well, rent's already expensive there. And it's like, oh, well, then we should, by all means, make it so no one can live there except the 1%. Yeah, right. Let's so literally just, let's, we'll pave those streets in gold. Donald Trump can walk down there. <clears throat> yeah. And with all the people that have that kind of money, and that's just what LIC will be. We'll just change mm-hmm. it to that. Yeah, and, and it's, it's very subtle. So it's just like h- how you say, you know, you have to kind of read between the lines. Mm-hmm. And that's the same way I feel about Puerto Rico. With you know, with all the yeah. the incidents that have been going on over there, that come on, man, should they, be a fucking state by now. Absolutely, it so. should be, but at the same time, but there's businesses that really women get really good. Li- text. Women shouldn't yes. be living under scrutiny in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So well, yes, <laughs> going, going going back to your original point, <laughs> I like that call back. That was important. We were talking about we were, we, you had um, to reel it in. So while we're talking about apps, can we talk about? <laughs> That app in northern and Hebe in the northern province of China. Oh, I love this. Oh, we gonna talk about this. Is hilarious. Can we talk about that? Like, there's an app. This is hilarious. There is an app in uh, the northern provinces, a province in northern China. Like, it's called. I don't know. It's connected to the WeChat, which is like the biggest. Yeah, basically, um, it's like the number two app in the world. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, this app will allow people to have access. No, it's basically, you can. Okay, do you ever, do you know that uh what's the the dating app? It's called uh, Tinder. No, it's right. called uh, <laughs> we, uh swipe right, right for debt. Swipe it's so for stupid. Uh, there's a new there's a new one. It's, it's like called a, upper, upper class one they got now. Bumble? Not Bumble. There's there's, Bumble? A, there's a new Is, one. Are we talking about a dating one or are we talking? About you know, it? it's stupid. But a friend of mine actually met the love of her life through this this app. It's an app that will allow you like to know whether or not how many bar? times no how many times someone has passed by you. Oh, uh, what's it called? That's wild. It'll it'll let you know how many times someone who also has this app has passed by you. A friend of mine, Olivia, that doesn't sound like a stalker app at all. No, my friend of mine, Olivia, oh, um, actually met oh, this dude because Olivia. of that. They hit each other up, and they're they still together. This was years ago, and they're living together in Denver now. It's, it's insane. Wild, um, but similar to that, there is an app in China that will allow you to know whether or not you're near someone in debt. I am not I joking. One. I read that one. There is an app that will allow you to know who are the highest debtors or people in debt in your area. Is it just called wild, public dude. shame? It's a no, shaming app. Really that's that's exactly what it is. This is bro. Right. So this is the idea of the app. So, so <laughs> I mean, now, the positive news about this app is that if you do good works, like public works, it raises your score. Dude, this in is, this app, this is Black so Mirror. This is Black Mirror. Yeah, this yeah. is Black Mirror. Black Mirror. That's, that's also my favorite episode. Black just black aesthetically, that episode is weak. So right. So, like it? About, yeah, this do, sucks. Do you no. Know? So you're not rating people. You're already rated by this app by um wh- whatever the criteria is. Yeah. And if you're in debt, you can't have certain services. Just like in Nosedive, right? Dude, that's There's, crazy. This is this is happening. Yeah. This is happening. Um, like 1.3 billion people in China, and I don't know. Somehow I feel like this is just going to spread to America. On it, if you're on WeChat, like if you're on WeChat, yeah, that's straight up debt. That's, discrimination. They know. Yeah. They know what you're. For we're it. talking about people in debt. It could be. It's also talking about people who can be out of debt, but who are still in debt. Bill, you owe a parking That's what the article ticket. stated. We're shaming you. Yeah. For that. The article didn't state just someone who's like just coming out of like school with student mm-hmm. loans and blah, 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 and like no one wants to be near them because they owe money. No. It's like someone who's actually been um, accruing debt, even though they are financially able to yeah. be out of their city. It's hard okay, to explain. Well, that's a different one. That's a different but one. If it's, if it's, it's someone not a different that one, has... No. So it's someone like, for instance... We're talking about everyone. This is just including those people as well. That's oh, so okay. So right. everyone. Anything, anybody with debt. Everyone right. With it. Doesn't matter. But anybody in debt doesn't have the same score as someone True. who is in debt and actually can pay for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, if this app was for people that are basically fucking other people over, then I'd be all for it. Like, for instance, if you were, let's say, a contractor that stiffs, like, all the other people that work with you. <coughs> Donald Trump! Um, that I would say I'd be all for it. But you're talking about like anyone that like just can't afford to pay something back. Like they do a payday loan. It's and not they get something. Fucked. The score is like it's it's. There's so many things involved. Like 
We're talking your it. bills. You're talking your credit card no, score. Yeah. We're talking mm-hmm. like uh, oh, yes. whether or not you have equity. Mm-hmm. We're talking about like, um, geez, I mean. But it's everybody in the country. We're talking about adulting. Basically. We're talking yeah, about everything really. that has to do with uh, your, like, it's considered FICA. It's considered <clears> like, uh, yeah. it doesn't matter. Your yeah. history in general, you get a score. Once you're on WeChat, you do get your own score. The algorithm. And, it up. right. The algorithm will tell you what your score is. And then if your score is very low, it, it alerts people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it alerts Jeez, like so Can you imagine? deadbeat. Ding! Deadbeat. Wait, like, right. Is, so like, <laughs> get her. Wrote, is it only for other people who have the app also? Right? But everybody has Of course. That app. No, no. You're not going to all of a sudden like get a ping well, on your that's, phone. That's okay. Even if you don't have the app. Like, hey, I mean, by the way. Yeah. So <laughs> just one person well, coming up. It, like, imagine like a stranger coming up to you like, Shh. Don't trust that. Like, <laughs> well, you no, that's not making any sense. You have to have the app. Like, you <laughs> but you basically said like 1.3 million people have the app or something like that? No, there's 1.3 billion people in China. I'm just saying like right. in the northern province, if it spreads anymore, right. apparently it's going to leave the country and start like other people are going to start thinking it's a good idea. Oh. You know, I don't know how nose dive started, but I'm pretty sure that was a, yeah, a good start. A similar idea like that. Well, no, I don't, I don't, I don't like it at all. It's a like public shaming all. app. Yeah, I don't like that idea at all. I don't think it's going to make it here not for a very long time unless everyone's in agreement that like you know we're all amazing so we need to I find mean, out the, the least amazing people we're all <laughs> <laughs> we're this all country is in date yeah that's yeah. really sad yeah but so the, wait, basically oh, if it comes here like the chinese are just like you owe us money is that literally every time they get paid you know it's, it's also like, the same episode of black mirror where um it's really sad it's like a darker version of black mirror that um the military guy when he was <laughs> killing roaches and then Realized that the roaches were actually humans. Uh, they just okay. they were just humans with like you saw bad genetics yeah, or bad condition. Like, yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, so is there any? What's the benefit of having an app like this? Is there but, any benefit at all? I know we've been like shitting on it for a long time, but they, somehow a lot of people are using it and it's working for them. So but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. It's one of the things that I read in that article where they said that you know some of your debt. Uh, if you're like you come into good graces by yeah. doing certain community things so about like just said. Said giving like, blood by doing good work I know I know but like giving, giving blood, blood <laughs> giving blood was very specific in the article <laughs> and so I was like what the fuck so <laughs> I, I just thought they that was that, that was very uh, very very unique yeah. you think they did that on purpose like <laughs> probably like the man. there's probably some China, vampires running China look well, your credit goes up if you donate sperm <laughs> to <laughs> a certain clinic a certain clinic this clinic specifically <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, just like uh, in uh, Black Mirror, if you uh, mm-hmm. say nice things to people and they keep rating you, mm-hmm. I thought the, I thought that was I hated that episode so much. Yeah, me too. Um, wasn't I think the people who love that episode are the people who are obsessed with social media. Um, so yeah. we can move along. I really we there's not much more to say about that. Yeah. That's really but it's sad. tough. I mean, yeah, apps are it sad. All, it all really goes back to like. Because the question is, <clears throat> should we do anything about it, right? Or should no? That was a Saudi be, thing. I know, but like, do we also wait? What there's the nothing question? we can do if we have, if they have an app that just says. Oh, unless okay. we also go to Tim Cook and Sundar Pichai, and be like, hey, exactly, yeah, stop so, them. But I don't think that has to do with um, iOS or or Droid, right? I don't know. I don't Doesn't China have its own um, operating oh, system do. with their phones? Oh, they do. Yeah, they would. Why? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, just like uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, like, why wouldn't they? They would. <laughs> um, they hang out with us. <laughs> anyway, so. That's sad. Um, <laughs> I, I can't, it's, it's so we don't see bit, any benefit from ha- from this happening at all. I love pros and cons. I like to see both sides. Well, like uh, I said, both sides I, would, I would only see benefit in it if you're taking people that are fucking other people over. Like you said, people that have means to pay back stuff, right, and are making no attempt to do it, and are continuing to do the same type of like behavior. Like for instance, I used to live in a building. I'm not going to tell you where. But you walk in the building and you already knew it was sketchy because there's a sign on the wall and it literally says, if anyone from 311 shows up, do not let them in the building. So that's the first thing you see. So you already know there's some sketchy shit going on in the building, right? <laughs> what you found out if you talk to like any contractors, because the hallway, I was only there for like less than two years, but the hallway had never been completed. Like literally, the entranceway is in pieces. There's open wall here. There's this. There's pipes exposed. Yeah. And what you found out from talking to contractors is they'd be hired to do a job and they show up and then they keep working and they'd get paid and they'd keep working and they wouldn't. And then they just stop working because they weren't getting paid. That's the guy who was doing that. Basically. Isn't that what happened with Mount Rushmore? It's the exact same thing that happened with Mount Rushmore. It was, it's unfinished. And that's why there's so oh, much yeah, rubble yeah. in front of the It's supposed to be heads. really weird. They're supposed to be like, yeah. uh, they're supposed to like, and then the guy the whole just died. carved <laughs> up. Yeah. 
And that was like an artistic thing just based on one Italian dude, I think. He's like, these are the four greatest presidents because I say so. And then he just did it. Like, everyone's like, okay, here's some money. Just go ahead and do it. It's Italians exactly know American happened, presidents yeah. better than Americans, sure. And that's how it started. You want any uh, ice? Oh, Jersey. I do. No? I want not ice, but the drinks. Nice, but Fill me up. It Fill it up. All right, so I guess we're taking some kind of momentary break. I don't know. <laughs> we're in, not taking a momentary break. I'm sorry. Go ahead. In my eyes, it's really not surprising. Like I'm not even shocked that that's a thing. Because I don't know. Growing like growing up in like this generation where all the like you can see. What's this generation called? Z. Apparently, <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. Zinia? But I don't know. It's just because we're Generation X, and that was a while ago. Generation Y. Well, then what's Y? Why is like, why? It's millennials, I thought. Is that what they're calling? Millennials no. Are, no, millennials. Well, the youngest one is X is boomers, right? X is or boomers? No, no they're boomers. Boomers are boomers. Are, boomers, are, boomers, are, boomers, are, boomers. Don't do that boomers, to us, bro. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> don't don't the, equate the us to the destroyers of everything. The economy. Yeah. <laughs> no. So you have boomers, you have Generation X, right? Then there's millennials, and then it's Y. Are we Generation X? I thought it was post millennials. then millennials. I thought it was post millennials. I thought, I thought it was why? Post Malone. I didn't know exactly how we had yeah, those I together. Thought, post Malonial. Malone it's Post Malonial. That's what it is. <laughs> that's it's Post Malonial. That's the most recent. You're Post Malone. Yeah, I'm a Post Malonial. <laughs> no, <laughs> ah! that's, that's good. That's good. I want to use that. Let's the use that. Yeah. Post Malone. Oh, no. <laughs> you have ice cream right here. Yeah. Get some. <laughs> Some that's tears right water. here. Get like, some tears into the ice cream. And you have to mumble up. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh my God, he's a genius. Such a 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 like, word? like I just, I just find that app is like a bad, like stand up routine, man. It's just I don't, I don't really see it <laughs> as, and and I, and I feel like that's, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going too a little too far with it, but I feel like that's a part of like, that's something in their culture that they would do, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? To yeah. that kind of thing, and so the same know, thing with Saudi, just it's setting like not an honor code in, like, with yeah. that yeah. app. Is basically, what, yeah. 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 so why we talking about world news if we can't talk about? What, they're just like, you know what? That's them. Let's, let's that, let them do nah, them. Nah, right, would you, let them do that. Would you feel all right about it if that app was for us and it dinged every time a sexual offender passed by you? Oh, oh. isn't that what happens anyway? I would I'm already. Are you supposed to like have, notify no the app. neighborhood? There's no app. Yeah, the app. Like right. right. You have to go to a website. Like, website. To be honest, yeah. I would still feel weird. If there's because an app, like, that's damn, crazy. Now I'm now my phone is telling me how to feel about a person. We're talking about people who fuck children. We're not talking about people who like can't <laughs> yeah. pay their student loans. That's and that's, shit. that's that's like that's yeah. a whole other thing. But still, but I mean, that's you're right. Like, what's the point? Like, you're like there'll be someone like that went to prison like 30 years ago for a murder. Like, ding, murder. Like, We're talking about people who harm people. Yeah. Yeah. I know. They're, but, they're but shaming people the who harm themselves the, so this in is, China. We're, we're going to talk about Black Mirror again. If you keep going up with these progressions, do you remember the episode with uh, John Of course I Hamm, do. Right? Whatever you say, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that episode was kind of messy. That I was uh, White Christmas. Yeah, yeah, where he was in his so, own head. Oh, God. He gets, basically, it's not, uh, everyone gets blocked from him. It's kind right. of an app thing. So because he was a criminal and he did this murder, they let him out of prison. Uh, like, you're free, he's but no one can. No but one no one can, can communicate him or right. see him or talk to him. So he's basically, he's like homeless in a world. You know, like no one really like gives him any love or not. That so was so uh, sad. That's the progression, that I guess, so of what sad, you're saying man. of these apps. If it goes from like the debt thing, it's like, well, if we do the debt thing, then why can't we have the sex offender one? Which I'm surprised there is not a sex offender app out there. But then you have murder and you have any of the rest of these things where like you have a map mm-hmm. where you're taking out people's private information and kind of using it in a sense for your benefit to make money. I don't, right? I don't think but, it, uh, I don't think it, they give out their information. I think it's just like a rating, you know. I know. But like, yeah. if you have your own artificial rating, the same thing like Facebook or Instagram, or whatever. It others you in a way. Yeah. Man. Like, but yeah. once it takes over, like if Amazon did it, then like it's global. Like if yeah. Amazon had something like that, like. Oh, wait, I can't hear you much, Lou. If Amazon had something like that, like where they create that type of thing, where like, it's not like they're an app company, yeah. but if a company of that level with an app of that well, level. Well, we, we if do If it becomes a Facebook, if it becomes already. an Instagram then it's like it's kind of hard to unplug from that. Yeah, you as a user has a rating and Yelp and everything. Like every like mm-hmm. Uber, it doesn't matter. You have a rating anyway. Yeah, but which, you which, mentioned which taking away so certain <laughs> things from that people, right? Benefits and different things. They weren't allowed for certain things. Right. That's where it starts to get kind of messed up. Yeah. I mean... I don't think certain things should be equated together. Like jobs that deny people because of credit rating? That has nothing to do with your fucking job. The worst feeling in the world... Like I've dated... 
people richer than me or dated poor and I don't want to like meet someone and be like, hey, so how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, of course you can get me a drink. We're having a great conversation. It's like, bing. Uh, you know, I feel like. It's late. I got to work tomorrow. I feel like that, that happens already because you go out on a date mm-hmm. and then the person asks you, what kind of job do you work? And then I try you to know, make a point not to ever ask that, man. but that's tough. But and that, but yeah, that's but like yeah. that's that's, col- that's a New York thing that, specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not just New York thing. You that's know? an American culture thing. In the rest yeah. of the world, the first question is not. So, what do you do for a living? It's yeah, like, what do you what do you hope? What do you do? What do you? I'm drink? a food they and beverage administrator. They don't really care what you do. You know, they it's more about you. In this country, it's kind of like, oh, 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 you do that? Oh, I don't need to talk to you. You're not important. And then we go to the next thing, which is also, I guess, would be an L.A. thing, too. It's like, it can you help lie. my career? No, right. I don't need to talk to you. Well, it's funny because nowadays, people who go on dates, they look them up on social media anyway, before the date even mm-hmm. happens. Yeah, of course. So you yeah. already know all <laughs> like, the information. Like, like, I know, but like... We're talking shit like, yeah, of course, yeah. no one does that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> like, you're on a little background check, right? It's like, I don't mm-hmm. know what you're talking about. I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> yeah. But still, it's tough. You're not on Facebook or Instagram? All right, I don't, I don't know about Facebook. Even though you dated people before, like, 2008, before you had all this stuff. And yeah, then for real. Now we're just like... Now uh, if they're not on, they're like... These it's weird. I know. Now it's a weird thing. It's like they're not even on the, the net. How do we find them? How do we stalk them if we can't find them on these social media? Just text me. Yeah. Just text me. Just, oh, or man. call me. Can we talk about the Grammys? We could try. <laughs> I think we could oh, try. Uh, Who, did, everyone, did anyone oh, see the god. Grammys? Oh, I didn't even watch it. Oh, God. I love the Grammys this year, man. Oh. Just from a performance Because I aspect. watch it every day with popcorn. Just me and my girl. You wasn't feeling it? No. All right. I mean, all right. Okay, all right, look. All right. Let's start at the beginning. All right. Let's, let's start the fact that let's start the, you're younger. I guess. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I, as an award show, I don't give a fuck. But, like, as a as a performance show and as a performer, I appreciate it. There were great shit. performances. Like, you Camilla Cabello. Up. Let's start with her. I appreciate I was just talking about with a friend of mine last night. Um, about how I appreciate her progression as an artist because everybody's seen that super cut of her just getting dogged by Fifth Harmony, you know? Like, yeah. Wait, which one? Who are we talking about right now? Camilla Cabello. Okay. Mm-hmm. And everybody, like, she's giving high fives out and people are like, Ugh, right? Like, swerving her and things like that. And then she comes out with, a like, a hot single. She, she does New Year's. She's got this opening spot at the Grammys with, you know, our boy Ricky Martin, J Balvin, like, number one... Latin artist in the world right now, I think, probably. Yeah. If not, he probably, I don't know. Donde esta mi gente? Yeah, man, like, <laughs> she she came up. So I, I, from a from a performance aspect, from an artist aspect where, like, your goal is to have big shows and good shows and remember memorable shows, yo, I appreciated the Grammys for having some, a lot of memorable things as far as performances. Like, her, I appreciated Cardi's just because, you know, on a, on a bunch of different levels, but just, like, also looking at her come up. Like, she went to the Met Gala in a year, yo. When you say her, do you mean Cardi B or Yeah, her? Cardi B. Cardi or B. Her. <laughs> yo, her too. I didn't know her was Filipina. And I, was, I didn't you know, know she was Filipina? Filipina. No. That's crazy. I, like, I didn't I, know that either. I didn't know you I didn't know that either. Grammy off of EP. I didn't know she was half Filipina. And she's just either. she's just so cool, man. Like, Represent. And then mm-hmm. Jan, um, Janelle Monet. Yo, if you want a crazy lineup, you throw Janelle Monet in because that lady can Yeah, I've seen perform. her perform live. She's like Prince and Michael. She's like literally. She is Prince and Michael. She's both of the. Oh, Aww. That's, a, that's a bold statement. Oh, no, fuck, man. Slow down. Care, Slow down. She, she ain't put out a purple rain yet, <laughs> so I don't want to hear none of that. Okay, ain't no man. thriller come out of that yet. I don't remember. I, but that's just like, that's that's a lot. Like, you know, her, that's a lot. Her, her, I'll I'll I'll, I'll let I'll allow people. He was quiet for a while. So he was like, <laughs> yeah, where he's waiting. He's waiting for me to fuck up. Chill, okay, chill, chill, chill. But then and then of course <laughs> Alicia Keys, <laughs> man, she's, mm-hmm. and her flex on everybody with her with her double piano <laughs> playing everybody and doing the whole medley thing. That thing was it was just a beautiful performance show. Of course, I don't give a fuck like awards, whatever. The only award I care about is the one I wore last Tuesday. <laughs> oh, shit. Supreme no, no. Boss, producer, champion. You know, yeah. like, most of the time, awards don't mean shit. So, like, as far That's as true. a show, something that entertained me, yeah, the Grammys was all right. It was cool. Okay. And I, um, yeah. I want to talk about some awards, though. Like, Casey Musgraves, right? She deserved it, right? She did really well, blah, blah, blah. She won Best Country Album and then Best Album. Of the, like, what is the best like best album of the year? Like album of the year. Well, there was best mm-hmm. album, then best record. So that's why I was confused. I'm like, I'm just what? saying. Yeah. Like, okay. Let that What's... put into perspective how many people right. are out there mm-hmm. that don't align with your views. This is America. General, this is know? America. Love that song. It won best 
song, best what video, mm-hmm. best not performance. I think Kendrick won best rap performance. But like these, a lot of these categories are just like it's almost the same thing. Best rap performance um, was Kendrick Lamar. What song was that? That doesn't matter. So <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I'm just saying. Can we like, throw out the list. Y'all just throw out the list and yeah. see what people want. I'm stuff. just saying. Okay, and then Drake won for God's, God's Plan. Plan yeah. uh, her won like two different. Which is fine. I don't mind God's Plan winning because of. Really, Nelson like, it was won just like a nice message, I guess. The video was nice. He won the nice, Iron he, Lung Award. Nice movie Chris Cornell won yeah. one posthumously. 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 Um, anyway, so do we feel as though the ones who do believe, not in performances, but the categories that uh, certain artists won, is there a certain artist that you feel should have won a certain category, like best female rap solo performance? You know, do we all love Cardi B? Are we okay with her being the, the first person, the first female ever to win? A, a lot, a lot, Cardi, yeah. a lot of people from our generation specifically are highly upset about right. that. Mm-hmm. I personally do not give two fucks. I say give, <laughs> give Cardi B, yeah. get and give all the strippers that she worked with a Grammy too. Just, just give everybody a fucking Grammy. I don't give a fuck about the Grammys, man. Hip hop was never supposed to care about the Grammys, so I mean, it's just like. Yeah. For it, for it to come to, the to to this mm. and and that's that's an interesting thing in itself, but yeah. I kind of feel like well, that's didn't, that's didn't like hip hop actually boycott the Grammys back in like the it early did because we weren't getting Dude, nominated. Yeah, they Best wouldn't they wouldn't even put them on. All right, yeah. I, I have a really serious question though. It's serious, but I'm never that serious. Like seriously, a lot of uh, there was a lot of female empowerment this year in the Grammys, but do you feel as though this was all well deserved? Because a part of me feels as though this is the uh, the president of the Academy Awards coming back um, and saying, like, this is, like, his comeuppance. Do you remember what he said last year? When we all said that the Grammys didn't have enough female winners? Mm-hmm. He was like, they just need to step up. Y'all remember that last year? He was like, they just need to step up. We need to step oh, up Oh, so you game. think because of that And statement, now, all of a sudden, this is all about, like, yeah, yeah, women running shit. Do you, like, so they want to be either it's there, well-deserved dude. or this is their way of trying not to look bad. I mean, I, I think, it, I think it's that. both. There's I think it's PR both aspect to it. All times. That's Everything. why. That's why I was asking if these people, if everyone actually deserves what they've won. Well, I, I, in Cardi B's case, because her story has been so much on the forefront, right? And I, you know, I've been following her uh, since you know when she was just doing IG videos, yeah, and she didn't even have her shit. when she wasn't even on Love and Hip Hop, and, yeah. I, and I was surprised that she even was on that show. I was like, what the hell is she doing on there? Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, so for for her, it's like you know, she she did what she had to do. She you know she had a team behind her. They made her into this thing, and she. It's like you know there there's so many examples in hip hop of people writing for others. I mean, RZA was writing for ODB. You know what I mean? And so I mean, it's like if you can write something and then give somebody, but that person has the voice to to. To, to voice whatever the voice you, that people you listen wrote. to with that. Right. So I feel like she she deserved every time I listen to her, I always think of Junior Mafia for some reason. I don't know yeah. why. It's the first thing that comes to mind. Lil but Kim. Lil Kim and um yeah. and, and Lil, Lil C's. C's. Yeah. I always I always think of the both of them. Now who smoked what buns in a little bit? What are you an idiot? <laughs> and, and, and even and even <laughs> even oh, like the line. even like the beat selection that she has and the type of things like it's just so reminiscent of of them specifically. But that's just me. But I just think she needs to lose the. Uh, 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 I hate that shit, man. <laughs> well, well, that reminds me of chicken heads, like man. Know. A lot of people know. gravitate well. towards her because she. If you look at it, she's kind of like one of those American success stories, right? <laughs> yeah, she is. Because look, she's uh, you started as a stripper. That's, that's one of the fine. least just respected don't. industries. Okay, that then then say things that are possible. Uh, 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 uh. You know, like is, that, is that it? Roosters. Is that it, bro? I know, I know Dominicans love roosters. Bro, really, it makes too many noises. Really, don't set Dominicans back from just not even talking anymore. Just because you know she's seven thirty out of her mind, bro. So you you should be lucky. That's all she doing, bro. Because them videos on Instagram when she was first coming up mm-hmm. were insane, dude. Funny, when she was bro. running through the bodega screaming. Early in the morning with the rollers in her hair, I said she got no fucking sense, boy. Uh, Saka, <laughs> absolutely. She from Sakakas, Sakakas, Ka, Ka, So I, I, imagine I, someone tuning in right now to Boozy News, They're like, what the fuck? What is going on? That's all they hear. 
I feel but like yeah. we did have drinks though. <laughs> Why right, don't I feel like we had right? drinks? Right, I know, right? But Someone she something and something. No, but I, yeah, I feel I feel like she she deserved it as far as like the summation of everything that she's yeah, yeah. she's going through. And then you see Offset mad uncomfortable every time she gets more <laughs> successful. So and it's like so visible in the pictures that they take with each other. So it's just one of those things. It's like Bradley like, Cooper and the Star is Born. You Same know? thing. Which, which now, okay, I was, I wanted to bring that up because I know uh, you love that song. I can't get it out of my head. I'm and I fucking it. loathe. I loathe. I, know, I love. I know. You know what else I loathe? It's an earworm, man. I'm telling because you. Because it's like it's like Whitney Houston's single to the Bodyguard. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, if whoa, I <laughs> that that thing. But that was a damn good song. Though. It, it was. Oh, I, I I can still res- I have nothing. Is that what he's talking about? If I can still respect I love, I love the song. It's a Dolly Parton song, but yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, the Dolly Parton version. I can I can still respect the song, but I can still hate the song too. And of I course. hate oh. that song from Whitney Houston, and I hate this song <laughs> with Bradley. And I already, catchy. yeah. Do you hate? Uh, I believe I could fly in the Batman Forever soundtrack. No, on the Space Jam soundtrack. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> why are we Why are we going there right now? Let's Let's not even open that can of worms. You don't like? I believe uh, I can fly in the Space Jam soundtrack. I actually don't. Like, you don't like Kiss from a Rose from Batman? Kiss, no, soundtrack? Kiss, from, Kiss a from a Rose is fire. Kiss from a Rose. It's just yeah. something about like the it's long fine. chords, like the the. Ah, yeah. And then the oh vocals, God! Da, 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 da. It's something about. But yeah. I can. Kiss from a Rose is plot, good. You know why plots. Kiss from a Rose is good? Because at the time it came out, there were no songs that were in three fourth measures. Everything. Oh, if, you, yeah, if you listen yeah, to Kiss yeah, from a Rose, multi, yeah. it was always uh, everything was four four, and then everyone, no one thought that it was gonna work out. There was a whole story behind it. He was That's like, "What are you sick, like, there's... man? Yeah." And then it. he still made it work in three fourths. That was that other fourth. It's you know, they lost in music, it, it's dangerous to do yeah. something like that because yeah. like you really got. Well, true. When you start changing it up, yeah, but he killed it anyway. Sorry, King. How yeah. much you no, hate, I mean, I just, I just, <laughs> there are certain songs you that I songs. just. I just I just loathe that song, but I hey it's man, I can so respect good. it. I okay. can respect it. Okay, but did you see the movie it. though? I, I I just there's something just the irks me I know, about Lady so, Gaga. Like the, okay, from and I I'm just, telling you right I just, now, I just can't. I'm telling you right but now. I, I, I and I song. love and I love my dude, my dude Bradley Cooper. That's my man. Yeah, I love brother. Bradley Cooper. Hangover <laughs> all day, Bradley Cooper. <laughs> I love that. But I this, mean, he's been coming uh, up as a respected like filmmaker. Yeah, of course. Yeah, then the whole sniper thing, you know, that whole joint. Yeah, yeah. Um. But I'm telling you right now, King, I probably would be in your position to hate the song too. But that song reflects on what happened in the movie. I can imagine that, movie, that, movie, that movie. I can tell scene, the movie's a tearjerker. You've I seen the tell. movie, right? I've seen, seen the movie. movie. You've seen it. So you know I've that seen. scene where like that song even happens. Mm-hmm. Like you're just like you're there with her, and you yeah. just wish she, she would just get on the mic and just rip it for the first time yep. ever in front of a huge audience. It's mm-hmm. like lose yourself for eight miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. No, like. no, it's not. It's not the same because no. yes, yes, like, it is. Rabbit was in the on the mic before. We're talking about someone who's like never been in front of a big crowd in the movie and didn't even know she was supposed to be on stage. But she sung the song to him the night before. And he was like, he, he got her out of her job that she ended up quitting because she hated her job. She got, she got what's his name from the show Heroes to like go pick her up. And then uh, all of a sudden, like, from, she, from he, she was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? He was like, um, he wants you to, to just hang out in the backstage. She thought she was just going to be backstage. He was like, by the way. I'm gonna sing the song you sung to me last night. And she was like, "What? What are you talking?" About? He's like, "You gotta sing it now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call your name out. Just give me a phone." He's like, "You gotta do it." And what was the famous line that he said? Like, "This is our moment, or we're gonna remember this forever, or whatever." And then like he sings in the song the very beginning, and you're just like, "She's not gonna go. She's not. It's just him." And he does this. And there's this long pause in the middle of the song, the huge break, and she's like, "Fuck it." She gets up, <laughs> sings, and the crowd is like, "Who's this?" She covers her eyes the whole time because she's embarrassed. And then when she does that high note. You yeah. you lose it, man. You will mm. you will. Yeah, the chorus right. gets stuck. Should, right. For me, That's for me, me also the song I study the song a little bit actually reflects in the exact cadence of the entire film, the highs and lows of the entire film all the way to the end. Yeah, when they finally become in sync and you know, whatever I don't want, whatever. But <laughs> not gonna ruin dude, it for you, I didn't know it. watching that movie that it was gonna be so dark. Mm. I thought it was just oh, gonna yeah. be like I know the ending. country singer. <laughs> oh, you know the end. Okay, so mm-hmm. country singer like falls in mm-hmm. love with someone. He makes her a star country music it wasn't even a lot of country music in the in the, yeah, in the movie for one really at all. and i didn't know it dealt with addiction that was mm-hmm. insane like there was so many that dark moments so that, dark so like, that, i that knew scene that we how had it was Dave, gonna Dave end chappelle was in it like there was like yeah. this uh really serious conversation with chappelle i was like man this is 
some sad shit here, man. Mm-hmm. Like, not, this is a really sad movie. Oh, it's depressing. Sorry. And then the ending, and I was like, okay, this is nothing, whatever. And then I heard Shallow again, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... I'll tell you, like, it's the association. Of yeah, it's the yeah. association it fits, it fits of it with the movie. Ties into I would hate the song if I just heard it. I'm if like, if why is everybody separate, singing this shit? If it's separate no, from the know. film, it's, it's totally different. And they won two mm-hmm. Grammys just from that one song. Yeah, one good, good, good for them. I, I, I'm telling you, give everybody a Grammy. Everybody in the who, who <laughs> went there to sit in the seat should have got a Grammy. <laughs> give them he's a like, Grammy. Uh, he's like, what? Give them a Grammy. Elton John, The Simpsons, or whatever. He's like, hey, here's a Grammy. Give, give the valet. Do a Grammy. a Grammy. Give Puff Daddy's janitor a Grammy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Reflecting on our previous joke, if anyone's just tuning in. Puff's a um, great friend. Wow. All right. <laughs> How do you I just, talk I, about I, anything I, else after I, this? I feel like, I, but with the Grammys, I've like uh, what um, Bubba was saying. I'm now so, you call him Bubba too. Yeah, because Bubba. I, I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. His name's Beast Bro, Beast, but his Beast Instagram bro. is Bubba Beast Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep calling him Bubba oh, no, now. B-U-H, B-U-H, not that Bubba like the wrestler. B-U-H, B-U-H. Beach, bro. Get the tables. <laughs> <laughs> or else we'll be calling you Scar. We'll be calling you Yoko. Yeah. Yoko? Hiyoko Freedom. Hiyoko. Um, it's called by, then you sigh. It would just be sigh. It would be sigh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we know a couple sighs. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, but the the performance level, man, on, on the Grammys is always like turned up. To a whole nother night show, yeah. And I've never liked watching the Grammys. That was never my award shows. Just it's just uh, so saturated. So I can yeah. I, I never that was never yeah, on my radar. It's also never Oscars. a headspace I, I ever want to be in. Hell I no. feel like whenever I'm with people and we're watching it, everyone around me is always just like, "What's she wearing? What are they doing? Is that so and so?" I'm just like, this is not the headspace I want to like, be. Shut up! This is my everybody. song. I was yeah. Like, yeah, this I'm is my song. Like, <laughs> They're like, look at her, the way she's dancing. I'm like, yeah, but look how grandiose this performance yeah, is. And yeah. you're focused on, like, this person yeah. in the corner. Oh, so I that, never really like that. I just focus on, oh, God. That's it. <laughs> that, That's all that, I focus on. That, that also brings <laughs> up, I'll piggyback what Beast Bro said about uh, about people judging, is when you go on Facebook, bro, I just literally have to tune out. Because it's just yeah. as bad as when Game of Thrones is on or Walking Dead is on. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and, and everyone is just like spoiling everything. Oh yeah, it's the same oh, with Twitter. No, no, I was yeah. Game is that oh, Twitter's Twitter's worse Twitter's with the spoilers. Bad. Twitter's bad. But Twitter, Twitter is hate when it happens on Netflix. The when some, when there's a show or movie on Netflix, yeah. mm-hmm. and you know they're gonna show the whole season, <laughs> and then you have to be like one of those people that have no lives in order to yeah, watch it. Yeah, see it the first week before first everyone starts day. talking about it. <laughs> yeah. First you know, but like, days. Yeah. It's like my my Facebook is 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 dissected, segmented into different parts. There are literally people on my Facebook timeline who have won Grammys. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. They're like mad producers who come up. Yo, I just won. Well, oh. Somebody was just playing guitar strings with Jay-Z and they won a Grammy for that. And and then there's like 10% of that. The other uh, 60, 70% is is like what you were saying. They're, they're tearing everybody <laughs> apart. Uh, talking about how racist the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> the Grammys are, or, you know, they're not doing this and not doing or that. Change your name to the Clannies, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh man, that wow! Be... And then there's like a, a grand dragon on the statue. <laughs> you know, I did unfriend somebody once when they when they mentioned uh, what happened to Glenn in Walking Dead. I'm not gonna lie. Yo. Oh, like yo, soon, like it was, was like one. It was like as soon as the show was over, I have to watch like the next hour or whatever because I don't have regular cable. Yeah, mm-hmm. as soon as the show was oh, like. That like ten oh one, someone posted like gl- like a skull of Glenn or something like that. I would have. He was like R.I.P. Glenn. I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? And I just unfriended him. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I remember, yo, I, I remember, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. That's understandable. Yeah, dude. Why would you want to be? He with still hasn't befriended me. Friendship. So I've known since first like someone I've known since high school. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> hey, Friendship's over. Delete. You are dead to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> what happens, you have no idea. You know, like oh my god. So yeah, someone had ruined the ending for me of. Uh, the last uh, Planet of the Apes films that came out. Oh, yeah. I, I really loved the where they were going with it. I saw yeah. both of them, and I never saw the final third one. And then someone like literally detailed the entire ending, and I said, "I'm gonna fuck." The you same up. thing happened to me. <laughs> the same thing happened to me. <laughs> but I love like, to see you say, like read something and be like, "I'm gonna fuck you up." <laughs> <laughs> this is right at the screen. I'm gonna fuck, fuck you, you up. <laughs> the same thing That's happened scary. to me. <laughs> That's some scary shit. Saw the first one. Saw the second one. Was all hype. Saw the third one. It was the third one that ruined it for me. 
Wait, did someone ruin it or the th- film? Yeah, the oh, film, the movie the film. itself. That spoiled it what? for you. Wow, <laughs> that was good. I like that too. Good one, good one. That was good. Um, we have to be out of here soon. All right, I want to recognize that because we're only monthly. I want to recognize that it is Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Um, I did post on Facebook today asking people what what month they thought would have should have been Black History Month because <laughs> it's a reminder of like there was an episode of Martin. <laughs> <laughs> It was an episode of Martin. The episode starts off like just right away, like, yo, my Black History Month got to be in February. It's only 28 days. Think about it. <laughs> like, they only make February about Black it. History Month. It's only tw- Why can't it be like, you know, September or you know, whatever? I don't know what months have 30, 31 days. <laughs> I saw a tweet one time. March. It was like, it was like, yeah, of course, Black History Month's February, the shortest month of the year. <laughs> we were yeah. like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what month do you think should have been uh, Black History Month? Beast, bro. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, he's like, you're a Filipino history month. Well, man. we have a Filipino history month. Uh, yeah, see, the that's the thing. Ain't nobody even know it. It's October. Do no, it's know? here. It's October. Oh, Filipino I Heritage know. Month. I mean, I've been. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know I had I, I've been to. I, I love Lumpias and Hala Hala. I go to the festival every year. Yeah, duh. But I didn't know that was a month dedicated yeah, to Yeah, so we have October, but that's besides the point. Where do I think Black History Month should have been? Yeah, anything with like. 31 days. I don't even know why mathematically we should even August. bother having... Like, Go out. Mm-hmm. June. Days. August. Yeah. For no reason. June team. June so team. Yeah. It should have been in June. Or it could just be like every month. Shit. <laughs> every <laughs> month. Like, every, all you get is all. a month, 28 days. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how they set <laughs> it up. And then they're like, where's our white history month? You know what? Like, Someone did like, post That's that. every month. That became, <laughs> like, that became like a meme. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Try like two thousand years of unchecked, Yo. <laughs> like prosperity. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah dude. Are you Off kidding the me? back They've of other people, they're like, like "Where's Roman our Empire. history day?" It's like How about that's black, month. white history millennium. You know, wow, not month. Yeah. Uh, well, well, they the from what I read in a in a recent post. Um, and and I don't know how how factual this is, but uh, they said they based Black History. The reason why it was February is because it's uh, lined up with Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln's birthdays, mm-hmm. which uh, apparently huh. take place in February. And so because of their importance oh, yeah. to that's also why uh, we have President's course. Day tomorrow. Yeah, because so. Washington and Lincoln's worthless birthday. holiday. Mm-hmm. George Washington was on the twenty second. Lincoln was on the twelfth, mm-hmm. I believe. So Prison. now we have President's Day. Tomorrow. It used to be called the Uniform Monday Act. <laughs> I actually looked it up before, like, the, the, the <laughs> 70s. And <laughs> What? Yeah. Uniform Monday. It was just, like, for people to be off on a Monday and then have a three-day weekend. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, Sav. Wait. What, you go by Nan? I go Sav. Sav. He Cy. calls me Nan. Yeah, Nan. My family calls Nan. Me Nan. Nan. Sav. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nan, Sav, and Sai. Mm-hmm. Right? All your names. Nan's- I'm not Sai. No. Do you have a, like, whoever inspired you when it comes to, like, the black community? Poets, um, authors, writers, performers. Well, I mean, I really recently it was over the summer. I went to a camp, and I sang um, in a song that was written, like the poem was written by Maya Angelou. You're a singer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Should yeah. have opened with that. I had no idea. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I sing and stuff. But yeah, Maya Angelou. Sang. I just think she's great. I don't really have like a set person, but. Yeah. Okay, Drew. Uh, I've always been like a huge fan of like Sidney Poitier, being an actor. I get mm-hmm. it. Uh, Paul Robeson's got to ha- get a lot of respect for just like the backlash he got from speaking about like I think he was one of the first people that was like really in like really Ottoman about like black is beautiful. He's like I respect myself and that type of thing. And he got a lot of backlash from that. So a lot of love can go to Paul. I would say. So uh, James Baldwin is is a big one. For me, because I, I feel like a lot of the things that he says about being angry and being black kind of is like verbatim as like how I would put things sometimes before I had even discovered. Um, and even just some of like his wisdom on day to day life yeah. was just like, wow, this is like lined up, you know, how, how I exactly think and, and feel about some things. And also Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory is uh, super important, even, you know, later on, um, later years of his life. Uh, with things, so I mean, I could go on and on, but those those two are the first that uh, that come to mind when I think about. Oh, and musically, Quincy Jones. God, oh my God, Quincy Jones. It. Quincy yeah. Jones yeah, is just the the living Did you legend. See the documentary man. from? Um, I haven't, bro. Oh my God, that's so. It was, dude, it's, it's really inspires you to just 
he did so much in his life. Like, you just want to, like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. I'm just, yeah, like, yeah. sitting, I'm, like, for real. working for the man. I should just be creating my own, like, yeah, empire, you know? He made it happen. Yeah, he and really shout out to Rashida Jones for making that documentary happen. That's even that was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna sound very Samuel Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not dude, gonna, no. no, look, look. I know. Just hear me Legendary. out. All right. He's like tattooed on my arm for one for a reason, not just to look cool. Oh, that's, wow. that's, scripture, yeah. that's scripture from Ezekiel. Oh, that's exactly. But uh, I'm just that's saying, orange Ezekiel. He is. He leads the idea of like saying yes to everything, right? Because he's made a, a lot of movies. We all know a, a lot of a lot of them weren't great movies, mm-hmm. but snakes you know, on a plane, man. <laughs> but have you ever seen Formula Fifty One? Yeah, was that the? It, he has, he's wearing a kilt the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Never explains why he's wearing a kilt. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, the weird one. All I'm saying is like he's never caught with scandals. You know, like other mm-hmm. actors. Like he's 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 a family man, and he just <clears throat> busts his ass. He didn't even like. He wasn't even recognized till later in life, you know. Um, That's very true. Either way, like he he's like he leads an example of like you can make it happen at any age, and as long as you're staying active at whatever you want to do, like you'll be successful. Everyone knows who Samuel Jackson is. Mm-hmm. I think uh, even before he was Samuel L. Jackson, I think all the credits used to call him like Sammy Jackson or just Sam Jackson. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like whatever, and he's like, "I'm Samuel L. Jackson." You know, he started. Yeah. No, he's, that's yeah, when like he demanding his respect. I can't remember when I first saw him. I don't think it was coming to America. You, you know, of- wow. There's there's that one. You know, I, I I wonder if you identify with this too. Like years later, watching films that you enjoyed and realized your favorite actors had like the tiniest role, smallest role, <laughs> smallest role. Have you like, seen True Romance? We've come on True Romance, True Romance, Christian of course, Slater, right? Of course. Do you remember the very beginning? That Samuel Jackson as a drug dealer saying, like, they're like, man, come on, man. You mean to tell me that you eat pussy? He's like, man, I eat, pu- I eat everything. I eat the pussy. I eat the booty. Eat everything. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And then Gary Oldman's character, uh, he drags so he just, like, shoots him right away. And that's ah, it. That was Samuel totally Jackson. That. The, the, the time I remember Samuel Jackson much later was in Goodfellas. When they kill him, he's, the like, the dude that they set up from the robbery. He got shot in so many movies before yeah, he actually bro. had some speaking roles. Dude. <laughs> That was that was so crazy. And I was like, "That's Sam Jack." All right, let me know if you know if you recognize his voice. Do you remember in Kill Bill, Volume One, when uh, he wasn't in the movie, but actually it was no Kill Bill Volume Two. I'm sorry, it's the very beginning. Yeah. When they're in the wedding and they're asking the piano man if mm-hmm. he uh, can sing any songs, and he's like, "I could do any song you want." Blah blah. blah. That was Samuel Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you don't see don't his face that. or nothing. And did you know? <laughs> Samuel Jackson, he um, actually, what movie was it? He narrated, what movie was it? It was a uh, Quentin Tarantino movie. Hateful Eight? Well, he was in, it was in Glorious in Bastards. No, there was uh, oh, in Glorious okay. Bastards. He actually narrated a small scene in Glorious mm-hmm. Bastards. I'm like, this guy's, he's, yeah, he's, in, everything. he's in everything, like whether or not. That's Quentin is like his. I did names. a whole like binge on Tarantino films lately, just because I don't know, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, they're pretty. Quentin however crazy like, he is, like in, in the real world. Right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Does that choose Samuel Jackson? I know there's. You got Marcus Garvey. You know, you got like. Mm-hmm. I choose Samuel Jackson. I'm not looking for like his high intellect, but really his like his. Yeah. Business. Yeah. You yeah know. His work ethic. Yeah, his work ethic, his tenacity. Like that's Samuel totally Jackson. Fine. For yeah. real, there's somebody. You know? <laughs> Um, we've, like <laughs> we've gone longer than we should have because we started a little bit later, waiting for Bubba. <laughs> Bubba, Peace, bro. Bubba, whole tip. For B-O-H, B-O-H, we would have started a little bit later anyway. That's just what we do. It's all good, you know. Like people viewed, people had a good time. We do it at our um, own time. But I just want to make sure that uh, everyone knows who you are once again. What projects you're working on? Uh, what? what you do one more time, and what you're working on as well. Mm-hmm. True. Okay. All right, so, yes, I said before, actor, comedian. I'm actually performing uh, stand-up on the 5th, The Roast of Todd Monacy. Well, uh, and why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> well, I just kind of found out about it. No, um, I don't have all the details. I think it's going to be at the Drexler um, part of, like, a comedy show. But once I get the details, I will post them. Other than that, um, if you haven't already, check out Cobra Kai. The second season is going to be phenomenal. Shout out to Vanessa Rubio, who's about to blow up on that second season hit. Awesome. So shout out for that. 
You? Um, I am Savannah B. McConnell. I am a singer. Um, I actually just auditioned my first college audition yesterday, which is pretty dope. Nice. Um, <coughs> Westminster Choir College. Yeah. Awesome. Pro- projects I'm working on. Um, you know, I'll actually, I'll actually talk about it. I've never talked about it publicly. Talk it. Um, I am currently about to start filming for a series that will, like, when it's completed and if it's good enough, we're going to sell it to Netflix and see if they like it. Wow. So, mm-hmm. so you can't even talk about it, then. Mm. Well, I can talk about, well, we're starting to promote it just now. We've had a few meetings, had a few, like, filming sessions, but it's called Fostering Dad, so look out for that. And um, Fostering Dad? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. me. Awesome. They're mm-hmm. going to foster me. No, I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> like fostering a father, or is it just like a father who is fostering? It's about, yeah, it's about a father who is fostering um, four teenage girls who are in the arts and um, like theater, singing, acting, whatnot. And it just, you know, goes off at that point. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Beast. Um, yeah. So once again, Jax the Beast Bro. Instagram is Bubba Beast Bro, B U H B U H, Beast Bro. Um, yeah, I mean, most of my stuff currently you can find on SoundCloud at the same handle, B-U-H, B-U-H, Beast Bro. Um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm currently working on a, on a single that I've been working on. I met up with this dude who, like, our history is pretty interesting. Like, we know all the, a lot of, of the similar people. We just never really connected. So, finally got together and, um, he engineered this single that i'm about to push out um, i'm calling it no time and yes yeah, so look out keep your ears to the pavement for all that shit it should be coming out within the next week or so and um just a couple of things that i wanted to plug for the dj community so first thing is on march 31st at scratch academy i believe mm. yeah scratch academy is 7 30 to 9 30 they have the table turns event with I DJ love those Pearly. Oh my god! Yeah, so we went um, there after Supreme Fan once. Yeah, one time. Yeah, that show was fire. So uh, come through. It's with DJ Pearly, who is a DMC champ, Pearly. world champ, I think. She's dope. She's like, uptown, uh, right? Twenty fifteen or something. Twenty sixteen. I don't even yeah. know her year, but yeah, I think she's. I think she's from uptown. <laughs> so catch that at Scratch Academy. That's on the thirty first, and starting next week, um, there's a female collective that's building a, a Scratch experience for the community. Uh, it just is being birthed out of um, just, you know, a lack of female presence in the in the scratch community, particularly in the DJ in the DJ world. Um, and they're hosting an event on Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 24th, called Calling All the Scratchers, which is an invitational session open to females at all levels at Scratch Academy. For any female that is interested in scratch session, email cat scratchers, a C-A-T-S-K. R A T C H E R S at gmail dot com for more info. So again, awesome. hit up Cat Scratchers with Scratchers with a K. Um, if you're a female at any level looking to find a community to scratch with or a community of girls to come up with, uh, because it's it's frankly there's not enough, you know. So gotcha. Yeah, that's that's the two big events that's coming up. And Where's again, cutting candy nowadays. Man? Yo, cutting candy's out in California. So recently in um, in January, actually fifth platoon. And is a is a Filipino DJ collective from out of Queens. Like Rolly Row and all them. Yeah, yeah. Shouts to Rolly Row who brought me to uh, pretty much one of my first Supreme Bars events. <laughs> That's uh, right. Yeah, man. He I he, remember that. He slid me through. Yeah, year it was like Lantern. A couple, yeah, a year and a half ago. Probably. Oh. Yeah, that was still at the Lantern across the street. Is it? No, no, no. Lantern's not across the street. Lantern's no. Lantern's another on street, Bleaker, another yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, Rolly <laughs> Row, DJ Neil Armstrong, uh, Vin Rock. Uh, DJ Daddy Dog, DJ Cutting Candy, and I know I'm missing. I emerge. <laughs> These are cats that came up in Queens um, when I was just a, a young boy, and they really are in different places now. But I've seen them like, all, like in so many documentaries. Too, yeah, man, amazing. they all came to Queens. I mean, they all came to Fat Buddha in January wow. for for a 20 year anniversary, and they just did a whole thing where they were just all sessioning. Called up people to freestyle session. It was also your session. birthday, and I felt bad. Yeah, yeah, it was my I birthday, too, it. at that point. Well, that's where I, when I decided to celebrate my birthday. And it was a crazy time, man, because I, I came up as a as a little tot just watching my uncle just spin and go into these events. And my uncle's DJ Neil Armstrong, by the way, for y'all. And, and oh, like, wow. To see him coming up, and, like, we would go camping, and he would have his equipment. We would go to a birthday party. He would have his equipment. So it just, like, eventually he just grew up. You see him become this whole thing where he's, like uh, – Known by the DJ community, and it just put into me like, yo, this is a level of work that you got to put in to really get to a level that 
of recognition that That's I awesome, personally man. want. Pinoy, yeah, so Pino is killing it, man. Q-Bert? Yeah, man. So what? we're just trying to keep yeah. the next the next uh, generation is just trying to keep the the movement of you know Filipino DJing especially, but also spread it to that um, you know other half of the population where. It's just really short right now. And, um, yeah, so that's what they're trying to do with that. And, uh, again, you. I'm Beast Bro. Check out the singles. Check out the SoundCloud. And appreciate y'all for having me on to of course, talk man. some bullshit, talk some serious stuff. And mm. it's dope. Come back here. anytime, man. We'll, we'd love to have you here, man. You're awesome. Uh, Super King Armor. <laughs> <laughs> if you Official titles. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> March 1st. Very important date. It is my birthday show at the West End Lounge, uh, Uptown, and uh, Doors at 9, show at 10, on the dot. So if you show up any later, uh, you have missed a good portion of the show. So make sure you get in. And everybody, the show's only two minutes long. Everybody, <laughs> it's a quick But But, uh, nah. Um, yeah, so it's my birthday show, West End Lounge. Uh, March 1st, guys, be there. So, like, I, ha- I always put, uh, when I promote it, it's like I have one wish, and that one wish is to pack that venue to capacity, which is only 80 people. You know what I mean? So it's well, it's very it's very doable. Uh, there's that. What All, day is March 1st? March 1st is a Friday. Uh, and so, yeah, that the cover is 10, okay. and you just pay at the door. Uh, there's no online tickets and there's nothing this yeah so just yeah just pay at the door uh it's gonna be me and my homie magnet hands magnet hands will be doing the live beat making i'll be doing some covers of nas uh that i'll be doing it ain't hard to tell and then i'll also be doing uh l matic um l's uh cover of it ain't hard to tell from from l matic his project his his tribute to uh that album l matic from nas and I excel and prevail. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'll be doing those two joints, and I'll, I'll most likely be featuring some newer stuff too. There's gonna be a lot of new things in the in in my set. I've already been working on with uh, with Magna Hands. Uh, secondly, but definitely not the least important, my illustration book, which I always carry with me every day. So I have copies on me. Gone now. is the illusion. Gone is the illusion. Mm-hmm. Illustration Ooh. book. Like the perfect name. I mean, Gone is the Illusion. I don't know. I was like, yeah, oh. man. Uh, so, and, and it's actually the name of my album. And then I just created an illustration book based off of, based Gone off the album. Yeah. So it's a companion, pretty much. And in each, yeah, each song off the album has an illustration in the book. Um, I sell them for 10. You know, if you want to get them online, I, I've been mailing them pretty much all over the world. I mean, you can check my Instagram page and see all of that happening you know i've been doing book signings all that stuff I even did that there was a book signing i had at anyone comics in brooklyn and michelle michelle obama was having her book signing wow. the same day so i felt pretty important about that <laughs> and uh, it's in other cities like uh philadelphia or? uh it's it's not in any other stores uh outside of new york right now but i want to that's that's a move that i'm calculating uh to do you know, properly, because I just don't want to throw it in there, and then it's just kind of there, and you know, there's there's got to be a whole promotion uh, to make right. that work effectively. You're right. So, You're right. uh, but I do mail them out, man. I've you know I've mailed copies <coughs> to France, to Idaho, to any part of the globe, to to you know Ottawa, Canada. So, wow. oh, those man. things those things are up there. You go to Scar Man Lives. That's S K A R. M A N L I V E S at Instagram, and you will see all of that stuff uh, firsthand and in, in people with those copies, you know, in hand. So it's been a it's been a tremendous journey. Like I said, I sell them for ten. I carry them wherever I go. So um, it's been it's been awesome because I'll come home from an event like two three o'clock in the morning, waiting at the bus stop for the bus to come, and I'll run into somebody who's been keeping up with the Instagram account, no lie. And then I'll be selling copies like right there. Wow. So it's been, it's yeah, it's been, it's been a pretty, pretty intense and pretty cool journey uh, to be on. And and like I mentioned earlier, I'm almost done. I'm almost sold out of all my books. Nice. Um, I only have one. I had three boxes when they first came in and I only have one now. 
So this is That's uh, insane. Yeah, dude. And literally from Third, December to it's what, December, January, February. Yeah, and I've been In pretty three mu- months. Yeah. Three it, boxes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And less almost in less less than almost less than three months, yeah. Um so it's it's been and it's crazy because it's like all my all my years grinding as an MC uh is what helped make this uh pay off with mm-hmm. selling the illustration book because I was able to use all of those all those tips and tricks that I picked up along the way to uh to make it very effective. So that's where we are. And then and then once that's done, um, I'm actually going to go and start my own uh, indie comic book publication for the for the next batch of books that I get in once this one is once this last batch is done. So, I didn't know about that. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Dope, yeah. Um, I already have the name, but I'm not going to say it yet. I don't want to like I don't <laughs> want somebody listening to be like, oh, word. <laughs> I like, I that, like that title. I'm going to yeah. use it before you copyright yeah. it right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, that, I don't. I don't want to hold you guys up to, uh, anymore. But that's it is all good, man. That is, that's the love to hear what it. my friends are going like. What we're working on. It's great to meet Savannah as well. Uh, I am Roberto de Jesus. Supreme Bars. Uh, Supreme Bars. Bars is in beats and rhymes. We also got Supreme Fam every other Sunday coming up. Not this Sunday, but the next. We got Supreme Bars every second Tuesday, and we have Boozy News, where we drink and tell world news, world events, as well as American news every third Sunday at either City World Radio or Funkadelic Studios, wherever Jade Zabrick over here says uh, I should be. She's pretty much my boss. Uh, We love her. And once again, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for being here panelists thank you for uh, all of us not arguing about a certain subject you know <laughs> everyone's all love over here we love y'all peace many blessings we'll see you soon ciao Word. <laughs> ciao you're listening to the city world radio network high definition digital radio broadcasting from the city to the world